The Vulcan Excursion XA is a 10 inch Windows 8.1 with Bean tablet. It's got a 1280 by 720 display and for what the device is it works well. It's got decent colors, it's pretty reflective uh, for outdoor use. I used it outside trying to type up some papers at college and the reflection was pretty bad. I could still use it because I was under an umbrella but I would not use it in direct sunlight. Go ahead and flick it open there and you can see how responsive the touch screen is. With the pinch to zoom and zoom out features. Uh, let me go ahead and open the Windows App Store and you can see how smoothly it scrolls along in there. The Windows logo on the front is a capacitive button. It's not just there for decorations. So that's a nice touch. It gives a little vibrate when you do it. So it feels, it feels good. Uh, swipe in from the side also works. We have, since it's running full Windows 8.1, we do have the whole desktop here. I have Chrome installed here so you can see how it runs. Go ahead and type in an address here. Let's go to ESPN.com. There it is. Scrolls pretty smoothly. I do think uh, if you're not going to use the dock, you do get a better experience with the modern version of Internet Explorer, which as much as I dislike Internet Explorer, the modern version is pretty nice. But if you actually want to get work done, I'd plug it into the dock and use Chrome. Speaking of the modern Internet Explorer, we'll go ahead and go there now and see how it loads. Got eBay there, we'll go ahead and go to ESPN.com and see how quickly it loads. As you can see, you can scroll while it's loading. Uh, all in all, it just seemed to be smoother than the Chrome OS, or the Chrome install. Uh, if I zoom in and out, runs really smoothly there. Um, also, what's really nice is the gesture controls here. Uh, so I can quickly swipe between or do all the different things I've had open and closed. Um, we'll go now to some pictures. Uh, this is an HD photo I just downloaded that you can see kind of the vibrancy of the screen and how nice it is. Uh, zooming in on there, we can get in really close and everything. Uh, now I have over here are some pictures that I took with the cameras on the device. This is a picture that was taken with the rear camera on here, back here. Um, you can kind of see it's really grainy and washed out. Uh, not the best picture. Uh, this is one with the front facing. To me this one looks a lot better. It's still grainy, but it seems considerably sharper. Uh, if you're using this for like Skype video calls and stuff, to me that's acceptable quality right there. And I can't really complain too much about that one. Alright, I'll just let you see here how quickly uh, Asphalt 8 loads up. And I'll run it just a little bit to show you the graphics that this tablet can do. Make sure the volume's up so you can hear the volume as well. Seems to load reasonably quickly. I've played this game a little bit. Please don't judge me too hard for how bad I'm going to be at it. The graphics look pretty nice. Uh, it's a fun game. Runs pretty smoothly. You can see a little bit of lag there as it goes along. It seems like during gameplay, there's really not that much lag, so that's nice.
Of course, a key selling point for this tablet is that when you're done playing, you can get your little keyboard dock here, fold this back, set your tablet in there, and boom, you have Basically, it's almost like a little Surface tablet. Uh, definitely doesn't have the same specs as a Surface Pro, but I'd say it's definitely could compete very well with the uh, Surface RT. So we'll go ahead and get this going. Notice I can type there to get it open. Uh, you have your touchpad here. You can use it for scrolling. It seems a little bit touchy sometimes. Um, it also seems to scroll opposite of the way that I'm used to, but it's one of those things that once you get used to it, it does work. It's a little bit easier to reach up there and do it by hand, and that's what I would recommend doing. Uh, if you use a touchpad, you've got, you can tap on it for the standard left button click. You can, you have left click here actually, and you also have a right click. So, uh, let's see, we'll open this tab in a new window. So, it works fine. Uh, I have had a few issues with the touchpad. Uh, weird issues where if it's the computer's been on the dock and then maybe it comes off and it's back on, I'm not exactly sure how to replicate it, but it'll get where the mouse is stuck um, at a spot on the screen so I can move it up and down, but I can't move it side to side. I'm not sure exactly what causes that. If I shut the screen off, unplug it from the dock and plug it back in, it usually fixes it. It's just kind of quirky. I'm not exactly sure what causes that. Um, when you go, now that you have the dock, you can go to the desktop and you can be pretty productive with it. The keyboard is pretty good. I had a little bit of issue with the backspace button. It uh, kind of holds up a little bit sometimes. But again, it's not all the time, and it's something that you can easily overcome. If you want a really good keyboard, then you can pay the price for the really good keyboard. With what we're working with here, I can't really complain too much. Uh, let's see, I can go to eBay here, open a new tab, go to Amazon, open a new tab, go to YouTube. And, I mean, I'm running full Windows 8 right here. So there's loads of things I can do. I can load up games on here and play. I can use Photoshop. It wouldn't run too well, but I could run it. Uh, there's a variety of things you can do. Streaming video. Uh, you could go to the real Netflix website and watch it without using the app. So yeah, all that seems to work very nicely. Uh, let's see. Let me just open paint real fast so you can see that. Ah, this brings up another issue I have with this trackpad. If you click, say I'm clicking here, the left button, and then I move, it zooms in and out. It catches it as the two touch zoom motion instead of a click and a drag. So you do have to click and then drag yourself with that same finger. Uh, it's super annoying, something you can look past and you can get past, but it is extremely, extremely annoying. Um, battery life is not great. Uh, if you're not using it extensively, it can, I want to say three to four hours is what I would give it. I haven't done extensive testing on it. It just isn't real good. Uh, it's enough to get some work done. I would bring it with me on a trip. If I was needing to get hard work done, I would still bring a big laptop. For me, I intend to use it at my college. Uh, I intend to just throw it in my bag and go with it and not have to bring my big 15.6 inch laptop. That's kind of heavy. Uh, this is smaller. It's nicer. It folds up nicely. It's nicer for portability purposes. For actually doing stuff, Obviously, I'd rather have my i7 processor than my Intel Atom-based processor. But yeah, all things considered, it is not a bad deal for the price. There are some quirks. The keyboard 
or the trackpad quirk I mentioned. Uh, also, I've had it randomly shut off on me a couple times. It always boots right back up and doesn't have the issue for a while. But again, I'm not sure what causes that. I'm not sure why that happens. And it doesn't happen all the time. I don't know if I have too many apps open when that happens or what, but it does do it. So that's something else that you might want to consider. So it kind of comes down, the bottom line comes down to if you're willing to take a couple compromises to save yourself some money. So yeah, there's some compromises were made in the making of this device, but the price cuts may make it worth it. Uh, I feel that the device looks good. It works well most of the time. And shoot, at that price, I feel like it's a good deal.